Fortescue. The market, look, most people say they were pretty strong, but as we just saw before, flat movements in terms of its share price. I think it is a solid result from Fortescue. I think there's just one detail in the results that the markets are focusing on at the moment. That's the cost blowout figure. But really, 42% increase on the March quarter in terms of production is a very solid result, though the market was expecting a large increase in production after the March quarter was very heavily affected by, uh, by weather. But uh, they did get on track and uh, uh, record that 55 million tonnes for the full year as they were targeting and they're now looking to target around 89 million tonnes for the full year 2013. But they did say there will be around $600 million in terms of cost blowouts. Now the market mm -hmm. probably worried about whether this is going to mean they're going to have to borrow further funds from here. But really the numbers you would have to say are good but at the moment Fortescue really stuck uh, along with other material stocks in, in a situation where macro uh, the, uh, factors around the world glowing, uh, slowing growth etc is really weighing on that sector at the moment but the numbers itself were quite good and we're looking forward to Rio Tinto's numbers this afternoon as well where we also expect to see a rebound in production and I think while the focus here on Fortescue has been a little bit on these cost blowout numbers for Rio uh, the focus is going to be on its iron ore and coal production numbers which are expected to rebound strongly as well probably looking for iron ore shipments to, to increase on quarter by around 20 percent and uh, coal production to increase around 6% on the previous quarter as uh, Rio was also heavily affected by the weather in the March quarter. Uh, but if you look at the share price performance of these stocks, as mentioned, macro factors really weighing on the materials sector recently. Fortescue over the past quarters, that share price is down 20%. Rio's down around 15%. Uh, really China and other concerns around the world weighing on that sector. And in terms of views on Fortescue, that there are some varying views in the market surrounding Fortescue, uh, given it doesn't have a stronger track record as the likes of BHP and Rio. But in terms of commodity and exposure to commodity, there's a lot of positivity uh, uh, around iron ore, particularly in the medium term, as this held, has held up fairly well recently. Yeah, well, interesting. We're starting to see some, uh, just at the moment, some positive moves into some of those material stocks. The miners, BHP Billiton, just turning positive. Fortescue has now also gone positive, and we're seeing some positioning ahead of those Rio numbers. Rio up just shy of 1% at the moment. We're also seeing some interesting strength amongst the energy plays. Tim, your thoughts there? I mean, is it a value proposition at the moment, or is it more these geopolitical oil pressures going on? Well, uh, the energy sector at the moment today, it's trading up around close to 1%. It's also performing well today. Uh, it, the oil price did rise up around 1.5% overnight. Uh, I think it's risen another third of a percent in trade this morning. Mm. Uh, we have seen oil prices under pressure recently. Um, it dropped from around $105 around the beginning of May down to bottom out around $78. But it has been on a nice little recovery path since then, back up over $88 a barrel at the moment. And over the past month, we have seen, or past few months, we've seen the energy sector, along with the materials, quite battered down severely. Um, investor sentiment around these kinds of cyclical and risky sectors have really uh, seen a strong reaction in, times, in terms of share prices. And if you look at to some of the levels of our energy sector uh, players on the market at the moment, you would have to say that some of these do look to be attractive entry points, particularly to those investors with a longer term horizon. If we look at Woodside Petroleum, for example, um, down around $30, $31 the share price at the moment usually it tracks the price of oil quite closely but over the past uh, past year or so we've seen some divergence if we have a look at a two-year graph of Woodside Petroleum you can see over the past year or so that top blue line is the price of oil while the bottom blue line is the price share price for Woodside and you can see a significant divergence there uh, Woodside has had some issues with cost blowouts as well as delays particularly in its LNG projects but uh, the news flow for Woodside has been a lot more positive recently uh, Pluto LNG that's on track and it's actually ramping up quite quickly at the moment. We've seen Woodside also reduce its stake in the Browse LNG project. Now uh, Woodside hasn't had the greatest uh, history in terms of earnings growth but I think with these projects coming online uh, Woodside could be in time uh, could be turned for a time for a turnaround in terms of earnings growth which could be in for some growth in the future and the energy sector in, in general at the moment does look quite cheap considering oil um, amongst other commodities demand from the likes of a the Asian region is particularly strong for oil uh, so some of these energy sector plays might be looking attractive at the moment. Look, I just wanted to also get your thoughts more broadly on the market, but also the Aussie dollar. We might bring up an Australian dollar chart in just a moment, really knocking on the door of 103 US cents. A lot of chatter uh, about what Ben Bernanke is likely to say, obviously, ahead of tonight's testimony. Um, look, do you think the market's getting ahead of yourself? And what do you think about
about the movements on the back of once again expectations. Well, that's right. Uh, the Aussie dollar has performed very well. It jumped about half a cent, uh, half a US cent on the release of the RBA minute meetings we saw this morning. And I think the market could have been expecting a slightly more dovish tone there. Uh, the RBA was a bit, generally a bit more upbeat than maybe the market was expecting. And we saw that reaction in the, uh, the Aussie dollar really reflecting that view. Uh, and I think the, one of the big drivers, as you said, will be this Ben Bernanke uh, speech to Senate tonight. Uh, in terms of risk currencies, the prospects of further easing in the US will have a huge effect on currencies, particularly currencies like the Aussie dollar, uh, because uh, quantitative easing or further stimulus in the US will have a significant impact on commodity prices. Uh, commodity prices have risen in the past when we've seen further easing from the US, uh, with higher commodity prices see, we should see a higher Aussie dollar. So um, on speculation in the market that we have been seeing around the last week or so, chatter about further easing. Uh, the market was a little bit disappointed that week or two ago when uh, further easing wasn't introduced, but there's still a surprising amount of speculation on easing to come. And in terms of the Aussie dollar, that would see further strength. Obviously, it's up around that dollar uh, three at the moment. Uh, it, the, the, the highest close we've seen on the Aussie dollar before that was around dollar two eighty eight, which was on the 4th of July. So if you can close above that level, that'll be the highest level for the Aussie dollar since the start of May. Uh, so the market in general, uh, strong day today on the market. Financials in particular performing very well. We see the big four banks adding around 15 points to the broader index alone. Uh, so the financials doing very well, maybe buoyed by that uh, positive Citigroup result last night, which beat expectations. Uh, but in general, a good day on the market, up close to 1%.